Welcome to Argument Clinic, a guide to spotting flawed arguments on the internet. And today we're going to talk about the burden of proof. This is the question of who needs to provide evidence for an argument, and it comes up a lot. It cropped up during the Pizzagate affair, when conspiracy theorists were convinced that Hillary Clinton was running an underage prostitution ring out of the bathrooms of a Washington, D.C. pizzeria. After the wild speculation led one man to fire an assault rifle inside the restaurant, Michael G. Flynn, the son of Trump national security advisor pick General Michael Flynn, Wake up, America! and a member of Trump's transition team at the time, tweeted, Until Pizzagate proven to be false, it'll remain a story. In other words, it's not the responsibility of the Pizzagate theorists to prove that their argument is true. It's the responsibility of Pizzagate critics to prove that it isn't. Flynn isn't the only guy asking opponents to prove a negative. After CNN challenged Donald Trump's claim that millions of people voted illegally, he retweeted this message from at filibuster. Pathetic. You have no sufficient evidence that Donald Trump did not suffer from voter fraud. Shame. Bad reporter. Asking someone to prove a negative is a classic dodge. It shifts the burden of proof from the person making a claim to the person defending against it. And that is a bad basis upon which to build an argument. But don't take my word for it. Ask the Byzantine Emperor Justinian, who, back in the 6th century, established a set of laws that included this gem. Proof lies on he who asserts, not on he who denies. Today, we call that the presumption of innocence, and it's the bedrock of the American legal system. The UN considers it a universal human right. You may have heard that it's impossible to prove a negative, but that's not quite true. Mathematicians do it all the time, and so do scientists. But in the real world, it is much trickier. For instance, let's say I wanted to argue that Bill Gates ate stroganoff for breakfast this morning. Now, there's no reason to think this is true, but can you prove to me that it isn't? Maybe you could get him on the phone. But short of that, there's no real way to know for sure. That's why we assess the likelihood of something being true based on the quality of evidence supporting it. We have no evidence that Bill Gates eats stroganoff for breakfast. And the fact that I just pulled that lunatic example out of thin air does not make it any more likely to be true. If I presented compelling evidence, that would change things. But absent that, we have to assume that he didn't. So keep that in mind the next time you hear someone insist some claim is true unless you can disprove it. It's not up to you or anyone else to disprove their claim. It's on them to prove it.